right, hello, hello, hello. Well, yes, we are finally here together today, and hello, and I pray that over your week, your resurrection um, holiday service and church service last week, uh, that you were able to um, rededicate, yes, to rededicate your commitment to God on last week and have fellowship with your local church. Yes, or we are on now. There were some technical difficulties, but I believe that we are all ready to go now. Uh, but, uh, yes, or uh, I hope that uh, you all were able to um, connect with your local church on last Sunday with the Easter resurrection celebration. And that now you have committed to uh, to live, yes, a Christ-centered life, you know, a Christ-centered life that will uh, increase your fellowship again with your local church. Um for inspiration and, you know, the duration and preservation of family. Because, you know, resurrection, my friend, you know that resurrection uh, is all about a purpose-driven family. And I want you to know that uh, part one, my friend, of today's show um, of the um, purpose-driven family, part one was, you know, two weeks ago, it was a family affair. And, of course, last week, Part two of the weekend of the resurrection, Easter holiday, was the wounds of a mother. Yes, the wounds of a mother. But today, my friends, yes, I see you waving. Hello, hello. Please come on in. Come on in. Come on in. But today, my friend, or we will conclude. Yes, we will conclude uh, a Purpose Driven Family Series with part three. And that part three, my friend, my friend, is yes, a new me. Yes, a new me. A new me for greater works. How about that? Yes, a new me. How about you? How about a new you? A new me for a greater works. A greater works. Well, remember now, I did promise, you know, if you remember, some of you all were with me back on, on New Year's Eve. Yes, on New Year's Eve. I promise you that on you know, in my message on the New Year's Eve was my new thing, my new thing, you know, getting ready for the 2022, my new thing, and that I would at some time be wearing a cool hat. Yes, at some time I would wear a cool hat just to remind you and just to remind myself that the Lord is creating, yes, my proclamation that the Lord is creating a new thing. Yes, a new thing. Okay, yeah, a new thing. A new thing. The Lord is creating a new thing in me. According to his word in Isaiah 43 and 19, and yes, his word says, my friend, he says, behold, yes, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That's my proof, yes, uh, uh, that God is doing a new thing for you and God is doing a new thing for me. Can you say it with me? My new thing. Yes, okay. My new thing. Well, I want you to know, my friend, yes, or um, why you come on today is that uh, I am Wanda J. Prowell. Or your talk show host, yes, right here on the Ever Better Talk Show, bringing you, my friends, always bringing you issues of the heart for the young and wise. And, and please, uh, would you go on and like right now? Can you like, share, and tag some friends for me? Can you do that for me right now? Like and tag some friends for me. Okay. Hey, sometime my sisters, oh no, I'm not. I'm not, uh, I'm not snitching on you. I'm not snitching on you. I'm not snitching on you. <laughs> Hear my heart. Is but you know, sometimes our sisters can be a little slow in supporting each other. Don't let that be the case. We don't want that to be the case. I want both my brothers and my sisters to come on in and tag and share. Okay. Can you do that for me? Well, I want you to know, my friend, that um, in spite of last week, Easter's weather, I'm not sure what your location is, but in my location and several other, oh, we had a washout. There was thunderstorms everywhere, but we were uh, intentional about attending the Easter services, so we were able to just press our way. Yes, we pressed our way. But from last Sunday, um, 
whether many individuals still, you know, they were able to, they accepted Christ as their Savior. Yes. What's that? What an awesome and awesome or, or opportunity, especially on the Resurrection Sunday. They accepted Christ as their Savior. And others experienced the reunited fellowship. You know, we've been all locked in since the COVID and all. But they had an opportunity to reunite with the house of worship in their local congregation. Now, but now, my friend, that Easter has passed. We still talked about the new meaning now. Now that Easter has passed, you know how those holidays are. Everybody get all excited about the holiday, and you know, and the and then the and the, the the traditions and the fellowship. And once it's passed, then that's it. But I want us to ponder, my friend. Can you ponder with me three essential questions? Now that Easter Resurrection Sunday has passed, there are three essential questions. My first question, my friends, are you still with me? Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. My first question is, my friend, is um, is Easter and the Resurrection Sunday is over? Is it over? It was last week. But is it over, my friend? What about for the Christians? You know? The Christians, the new outfit, you know, you know, the new do. Is it over? My friends, absolutely not. Easter is not over. Easter is a name. Oh, oh, oh. You really want to get me started here. Because I'm here to tell you, Easter is not over. The faithfulness of God is new every morning, my friend. He would never leave or forsake us. That's what his word said. And if you have fallen in your walk in any type of way, say, say, all oh, individuals who have recommitted their lives to the Lord, you know, on Easter, Resurrection Sunday, and, and you know, their hearts were pure. And in between that time, somewhere down the line, you know, they may fall. Or they may do some things that they felt like, like they weren't really intended to do as far as, you know, maintaining the Christian relationship with the Lord. But I want you to know that God has not forgotten you. God do not throw us away. If you have fallen in your walk, God says in Jeremiah 3 and 14, turn, O backsliding children, the Lord said. He said, I am married to you. God is not going to throw you away. I will take a you one of a city and two of a family and I will bring you to Zion. God loves you forever, my friend. And God loves you every day of the year. Let nothing separate you from the love of God. You know, hard times, mistakes, ups and downs, you know, sad news. Let nothing. I want you to know that Easter does not end. It's really not Easter. It's really about the resurrection Savior. God and the Lord Jesus, God will resurrect us from whatever or, 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 or our shortcoming has been. And he will continue to do it over and over and over and over. Because again, God says he's married to the backslider when you can't see your way. But that's for the Christian. But what about the non-Christian, the sinner man, has the resurrection Sunday in for the sinner, the non-believer. In other words, was that the only time he or she could give their lives to Christ? Absolutely not. You don't even have to be at church to give your life to the Lord. All you need is a sincere heart. And of course, you're going to confess now. But I want you to know that that is absolutely not true. Revelations 3 and 20 says, behold, you know, the Lord says, I stand at the door and knock. And that is at the door of our hearts, at the door of our will, at the door of our intentions. And he knocks. And if any man, 
any man, no matter what you have done. If any man hears my voice and opens his heart, opens the door, I will come in to him and I will sup with him and he with me. God will, my friend, for man's, God's will for man, my friend, is that none should perish, but have everlasting life. Anytime, anytime, my friend, it's a good time to call upon the name of the Lord. And God is ready to do a new thing. Yes, new thing. God is ready to do a new thing, my friend, in your life and a new thing in my life. Whatever you're, whenever you're ready to submit, that's all it takes. Submit your will to his will. Oh, Lord, I can't. Oh, oh, I can't fix this, oh Lord. I'm tired of my present condition. Oh, Lord, help me. Whenever that surrendering type spirit takes place, the resurrection can be alive for you any day or night of the week or the year. Easter didn't end. The resurrection Savior didn't end. Our commitment to him must be while the blood is running warm in our veins. And that's a key point now. Christ is willing. He's there for us. That's why he died. That he, he will never die anymore. He's there for us. But he will honor or our willingness to him. It's only while there's blood running warm in our veins. In other words, when we die, we can't do anything. We can't change anything. So we've got to serve the Lord. We've got to give our lives to the Lord while our blood is running warm in our veins. My friend, the promises of God and his will for our lives are not limited to a certain holiday. That's what I need you to know today. It's not, not about the eggs, certainly not about the bunny. It is not just about one particular good church service. His plan for us do not expire. Until we die. He is waiting on us. He's waiting on you. And my friend. He's waiting on me. Well John 3. No. 3rd John. 3rd John 1 and 2. Says. Beloved I pray. That you may prosper in all things. And be healthy. That's God's will for us. And even as our soul prospers. My friend, my brothers and sisters, as long as breath is in our bodies, we are on time for God to work in us. A new thing. The promises of God, my friends, are generational. He promised us good health. He promised us wealth. It's generational, my friend. For keepsakes. He wants us to stay in the bloodline. Therefore, we must commit to doing things his way. Sometimes his way is slow. Most time it is slow. But we've got to trust him. God has a plan for you. God has a plan for me. And it's a good thing. Well, what about question number two, my friend? Psalm may ask, How did Jesus dying on the cross and rose the third day personally impact you or personally impact me? Just in case someone attended the service on last Sunday or they've been hearing a lot of information about the Easter and resurrection, what this got to do with me? How did his dying on the cross and rose from the dead on the third day personally, personally impact me? Well, my friend, I want you to know it's all about salvation. Salvation. Salvation? Yes, salvation. Jesus brought us salvation. In other words, to be saved. Before salvation, we were lost. 
in an eternal damnation. Think back now. In the Garden of Eden. You know, God's original plan for man is that man would not die. We will live always. But when sin came into the garden, and Adam and Eve, you know, took of that fruit, man became cursed for eternity. And what a curse. Eternal damnation. Not only the curse of dying, but after we die, Without Christ, salvation, die and burn in a burning hell forever and ever and ever. And this is not like a whisper or a spirit, you know, just like, you know, like a dream, you know, like you don't feel it. Oh, no. It's just like taking a match and put it into your skin. You can feel that pain. You can smell that burning. You can smell the smoke. All that was in, in, in store for man. But I want you to know, my friend, and not only for eternal damnation in the lake of fire or hell, but also while on earth. Man had no choice. Whatever or, or, or demonic or forces or the, the devil or did toward man, man was vulnerable and had no uh, repercussions, no recourse, helpless. But get this right here. Are you ready for it? Listen well. All humans. When I say all humans, I mean all races. Asian, African American, Haitian, Jamaicans, Caucasian, Native American. All the humans were slaves to sin. And destruction. And this was and this has nothing to do with race. Mm -mm. Sin was destroying everyone. All races. Good and evil. Rich and poor were all doomed because of Christ's resurrection, my friend. You and I are now eligible, I said eligible, for his divine ownership, adoption from God. Through the shed blood of Jesus Christ on Calvary Cross. We are divinely adopted by the Father. We are eligible. Now, we are eligible, but not automatic. So therefore, there is something left for us to do. God will not violate the, 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 the will of man. God is not going to force us to accept him. He wants us to freely and, and to willfully desire him as Savior. After all, he willfully gave his son, Jesus Christ, as the sacrifice on Calvary's cross. And we didn't ask him to do that. So when salvation is available, brought to us by God through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, he want us to, to, to voluntarily accept him, to want to worship and love him and to receive all his benefits. Oh, don't let me get ahead of myself because there are some benefits. There are some benefits. Well, I want you to know, my friend, God will not force us to accept him, but by willingness of our heart. Romans 10, 19 through 10. And you can go back and read this. Clearly said concerning salvation. What is salvation? How do you become saved? How do you become part of the, uh, of the family of God? How do you become a, 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 a legitimate child of God? Romans 10, 9 through 10 says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth. You got to say it. You got to speak it. You just can't think it. If you would 
confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God has raised. Remember that Easter, you know, when Jesus, you know, was in the tomb and God raised him up. He's no longer in the tomb. If you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Saved eternally from a burning hell, as well as saved from the from, from the from the, the, the strongholds and the demonic forces of the enemy while on earth. In other words, we will have a, 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 a godly opportunity to live a victorious life. Otherwise, you just gotta take it. You have to live in fear. Of all the demonic spirit, you don't have to walk in fear when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Oh, I just want to stay right there. And then verse 10 goes on to say, With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with thy mouth confesseth unto salvation. In other words, when you believe this, you may be at your home or you read these verses and you have accepted Jesus Christ. I want this Jesus. Well, you're going to have to tell somebody, you know, and you can tell family members, but, but oh, I encourage you to go on to your local church and share that with your pastors and so that you can officially join and be part of the local church. Yes, where you have that reinforced because the Bible says to forsake not the assembly of the saints because we need each other. Okay, well, our final question, my friend. Thank you for staying with me. There's one more. This is very, very important here. Uh, uh, that uh, 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 The third question, which is our final question, is everyone, oh, yes, everyone, especially the young folks, you know, we're just living in that time of uh, that just where we are. Uh, whatever is uh, available or whatever is required or asked, you know, donations or whatever the case may be, the first thing people want to say is, you know, what do I get from it? You know, that's what they say. What do I get? You know, and some people may may think that's selfish, but it may not be all the way selfish. Now, that is a legitimate question. What do I get? Talking about this Jesus and this resurrection, you know, what do I get? Or what's in it for me? They say that sometimes too. What's in it for me? Hey, not just the young folks, some of the older folks too, right? Yeah. And then the third one, they may say things like, what just come straight out and say it, cut through the mustard, cut through the chase. What are my benefits? Benefits. That's the key word. Benefits. What are my benefits from Jesus' resurrection? Everybody's preaching about it, but what do I personally get from Jesus' resurrection? Okay. Well, just stay with me then. Some benefits of being a child of God, walking or, or according to his, his, his righteousness. We, we, we're not talking about a dab in, a dab, you know, dabbing in and out. Oh, no, we're not talking about that double-minded. We're talking about a person who's sold out and being sold out does not mean you're going to do everything perfectly, but it means your heart is in the right place. Your heart is, is truly desiring to, 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 to live pleasing to the Lord. Some benefits, my friends, for you would be the benefits from the blessings of death and resurrection of Jesus includes, number one, we've already said that, forgiveness of sin. No matter how time, many times we sin, are you saying he will forgive you? He will forgive you. But you got to ask him. You got to ask him. You got to ask him. Well, not only that, another benefit, you have power. Power. You who are weak, you know, you, you might be the type person who has that timid type personality, you know, the timid type personality, you know, the, 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 the kind of personality where, you know, you, you don't speak up for yourself. Yeah, you don't speak up for yourself. And some people just may feel that you may be just a, 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 a doormat. Yes, yes. Or, or you may feel that, or, 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 or you may feel that uh, you may not, uh, you know, just have the, the wherewithal to just get things done. God will give you the power, the, 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 the extra, the extra 
or a power in faith to say that I can. And you'll take it to the Lord. Lord, to help me to do this. Because you realize that if you can't do it, you know who can. So power, when you're in right fellowship with the Lord, you have that re the relationship with him. And he's faithful in just to provide. You, you will go to him. So the, the benefits of power. Riches, yes. The benefits of riches, hey, I can promise you it's not like the world's now. Because the world would do anything to get rich. They're alive, they're still, you know, have all kind of deceptive means. God knows the motive of our heart. The Bible says that man's heart above all is, 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 is uh, 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 deceitful and desperately wicked. You know, those are not the type of riches that God provides. The riches that he will provide, again, will be walking in his word. And, 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 and while you're walking in his word, you're going to be walking in patience. And, 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 and riches is not going to be, oh, that's a hallelujah moment. Riches is not going to be the, 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 the ultimate objective. He wants us to have wisdom. So not just, oh my goodness. This is another lesson all by itself. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But when God blesses you with blessing, he is going to enlighten you of all the tactics of the enemies. If you walk in his way, walk in his time, and walk in his patience. And when he blesses you, the enemy is not going to take it. Because you will be well grounded and rooted and knowledge and led by the Holy Spirit. So that's an awesome benefit. You have the Spirit of God leading and guiding and speaking to you. Honor and glory. When you live, the Bible says that, that when a man's ways pleases the Lord, even his enemy will be at peace with him. Honor. Makeup can't give you honor. A fire car can't give you honor. Oh, do I want to stay right there? Peace. Oh, peace, 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 peace. When you can smile when things are going wrong. When you don't, when you, when you have a confidence. Yes, you have a confidence that you don't have to manipulate to get things done. You can wait on God. Those are benefits. That are given to us through the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost. Deliverance. Deliverance. Whatever that situation may be, it may be a, a, a horrible relationship. There may be some forms of danger. It may be whatever type pit you find that you cannot, uh, uh, you know, uh, get yourself out of. God is a deliverer. Oh, all these benefits and healing of all diseases. I've heard a lot of people talk about these diseases now. They go, well, you know, I've got such and such person in my family died from such and such, you know, maybe just like Lazarus, you know, we talked about doing the, the resurrection stories about, you know, and Mary and Martha, they go like, if, as well as we know Jesus, if he had been here, if he had come, our brother would not have died. Well, we cannot question the Holy Spirit. But I tell you one thing, if you read on in the Bible, you will see that there were some people, lots of people, who were at their last end of death row. But they pressed their way. Pressed their way, they went beyond their pride. Many times, my friends, because of pride, you know, even in praising the Lord and giving the Lord his, his due praise, or just thanking him, or, 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 or there's a hush hush. That Nicodemus spirit want to talk to God in private, you know, you know, don't want to own up to his Holy Spirit. When we and myself, you know, have issues that beyond our control, we will be like the, the woman with the issue of blood 
we just be just like the lame man who friends or, or you know, they lift him to the rooftop. You know what? You, you won't let nothing stop you from getting to Jesus because you know Jesus is going to answer you. But he is a healer. And, 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 and when you really believe that, 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 that the Lord or, or, or is a healer, or you, you're not going to, you, you're going to understand that there is a devil whose job is to steal, kill, and destroy. And he has, especially if you're doing a work for the Lord, he doesn't want you to, to be around because you're going to be a great witness for the Lord. He, he wants to take you out. Well, the thing about it is, again, is or 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 are you gonna keep it to yourself? God would give us many opportunities to shed our pride. And oh my goodness, he'll do it. And sometimes that that's his whole goal. He wants to show us that other part of us, that secret part uh, in, in our spirit that uh, uh we may not want others to know. You know? Yeah. When you love the Lord with all thou, with all thy heart, thy soul, and might, you know, yes, and thy neighbor as thyself, you know, you say, Lord, I gotta have you. God, I gotta be released from this. That's the power of the resurrection. Well, I want you to know, my friends, that or oh, oh, hey, a fruitful marriage. A fruitful marriage. That's a benefit. A fruitful marriage. Who wouldn't want a fruitful marriage? Because when you have fruitful marriages, oh, your marriage is going to be such a, a witness to the, the, the singles and the unbelievers. But hey, you know, the enemy is being who he is. You know, when you've done all, you can't just stand, stand that for. But God will give you the patience and the love and the power to go through and to wait on his will. And to trust his will. That's the most important. To trust his will. You know? Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Trust in God. The benefit. It is an awesome benefit. To be able to trust. The will of the Lord for your life. Authority. Hey. Authority. Some of you all may be able to go back into my YouTube channel and on um, the Wonder Proud and identify all those um, teachings on non-negotiables of parents for their different various ages children. You know, the non-negotiables for the infants, the non-negotiables for the teens, the non-negotiable for the for the preteens. In other words, this stops right here. Authority. Some people find it very hard and difficult to execute their authority. And there's a godly way to execute authority. But God will give you the power to do what you need to do and to be head of your family and to protect yourself and to protect your godly character. Uh, 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 in, in everyday uh, life, uh, it has been known as peer pressure. Yes, peer pressure. And peer pressure at one time was thought to be just a, a, a childhood or behavior or as well as teenage, but no, 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 adults. Anyone who is weak in that level of authority, who does, not, who does not have the confidence of why they believe in whatever that issue is, they're, they're going to let down. They won't be able to take themselves or their family, but the, the cross... That same power that raised Jesus, God's power that raised Jesus up from the dead. One of the benefits is the authority. He will give you the authority to say the yes and the nay. To separate, wherever the case may be, for the real and the safety of your family. And he'll give you dominion. My friends, he or she must first believe in Jesus and what he has done on the cross of Calvary. None of these benefits are going to be available to us if we don't do the first thing first. And the first thing is going to be to accept Jesus Christ as Savior. Oh, what benefits. What benefits. Oh, what benefits. And guess what? They do not expire. They do not expire. Even when your parents have gone to be with the Lord, or whoever your significant or others, or even your children. You know, we have tragedies occurring every day. 
But the Lord will never leave you. Easter will never be over. The resurrection will never be over. Guess what? You have an opportunity to experience the resurrection in your spirit. It's going to be that praise moment, that feel good moment. Every time the devil tell you you can't, and you go, well, I can. Every time you feel like you can't make it another another a minute, and, and, and the spirit of God inspires your spirit, you go, well, I can. You know that I can do spirit. That's a resurrection moment. Yes, the I can do is a resurrection moment. <laughs> My friends, I want you to know that we are talking about part three of the resurrection series of a purpose-driven family with today's topic being, yes, a new me. A new me for greater works. Yes. Hey, when you love the Lord and when you are determined to walk in his way, oh, you just can't stay the same. He wants to make you a greater witness. He wants to bless you even the more. And the more you love him, the more benefits you're going to have. Yes, the more benefits you have. Everybody don't have the same benefits now. Or the same level of blessings. It all goes back to your level of submission to him. So if you submit your ways to him and you love him, oh, he has benefits that's going to escalate. You don't have to ask him for a raise. You don't have to ask him for a raise. He sees you. He knows your heart. And it gives him great joy to bless you. Well, people's faith, my friend. People's faith fails them because they do not seek to have a and cultivate a personal relationship with Christ. Let me say that again. Because that, that's a great falling away. Sometimes parents are concerned about their, their children, their uh, uh, young adult children when they're leaving to go to college or leaving in a different location or military service, whatever the case may be. But the fear is going and then, and there, there are documents that, that support this too. They say that, you know, uh, the percentage of, of, of uh, children who once they go to college and how they turn away from their faith. Let, let, let me tell you something. And I know this to be, there is no way anybody can tell me or can tell my children there's no God. He's done too much. He's not a secret. People's faith failed them because they do not seek to have and cultivate a personal relationship with Christ. They'll go to church just out of custom. That they, they, you know, because you know that's just what we're supposed to do. But a personal relationship, do you know him? In other words, do you really truly love the Lord? Do you spend time talking to him? You can talk to him openly. He hears you. You don't have to have fancy words. Or you can talk to him in form of a prayer. He hears you. Well, are you obeying him? We talked about ways to establish a personal relationship with the Lord. How do you establish a personal relationship with your friends? Yes, with your significant other, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your mother, your grandma. How do you establish your coaches, your teachers? You spend time with them. Yes, you know their voice. You know what they like and what they don't like. You are available to them, my friends. And you, and also, too, separating yourself from things that are against his will. Yes. You know. I'm thinking about being a parent. I'm thinking about having children. Those teenagers, the kinds who, you know, they want to sneak away and they may want to engage in certain companies like even when they go to college. They probably go, well, oh, my my uh, uh, parents are real strict. You know, I can only hang around certain, uh, um, you know, group of friends, you know. And, and your parents, you know, clearly, you know, it wasn't because they didn't want you to show love, but there are certain, you know, characteristics that are, are, are that, that uh, dominates good behavior. 
And, and so, are you going to be one of those ones that sneak out, or are we, are we going to be one of those ones that 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 that, that step outside the parameters of the Lord and what He wants us to do? To 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 start doing those things that's not going to bring glory to His name. God can't bless that. But I want you to know, my friends, that or uh, 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 when we represent Christ in our character. With our fellow man, God gets the glory. When we nourish our love for God, our daily goals and desires become to put him first in all that we do. And 2 Corinthians, my friend, goes on to say, 2 Corinthians 5th and 17 goes on to say, my friend, therefore, uh uh-oh, that's that therefore. Let me say that again. Yes, it's 2 Corinthians Fifth and seventeen. You know, we're still talking about a new me for greater works. Second Corinthians five seventeen. King James Virgin goes on to say, Therefore, this is the Lord speaking. If any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. You may not look like a new creature just starting off. You may not feel like a new creature. Whatever challenges you may have had may be knocking back on your door. Those old friends. But I want you to know, you are a new creature. All you've got to do is call upon the name of the Lord. We're talking about those who accept, who who has accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you have entered into and received the salvation of the Holy Spirit. No, 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 no. no. You're a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. My friends, let's get excited about the plan that God has for us. Yes, I'm excited. A new me for greater works. I want to thank you again, all of you, for sharing our resurrection series, The Purpose Driven Family. Part one was A Family Affair. Part two, The Wounds of a Mother. And today, my friend, concluded with part three of a purpose-driven family with our topic today, a new me for greatest work. And I want you to know that you can replay all of these uh, in Facebook Live and also uh, YouTube, Wanda Prowl channel. All of these will come up. But most of all, get excited. And don't you dare think Easter and the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit ended last Sunday. Oh, no, it's every day, every minute. He's right there to give you benefits on top of benefits on top of benefits. This show, my friend, has been brought to you by Resolve 2010 LLC. Yes, Resolve 2010 LLC, a Christian education Family Service Ministry for Student Intervention, Parental Engagement, Teen Parenting, and a Healthy Adult Relationship. Please visit my website at www.resolved-2010.com. That's www.resolved-2010.com. And there you are also able to follow me on Instagram. Go to Instagram. Yes, I'm there. I'm there as Prowl Wanda. Yes, Prowl Wanda on Instagram. And on Facebook, you will also be able to connect with me for school readiness as well as um, the Resolve 2010 LLC Publishing Company. Yes, the Resolve 2010 LLC Publishing Company there on uh, Facebook. Oh, and also, too, there's another one, Unresolved the Blessing of Resolve Lifestyle. 
Yes, just put in Wanda Price. It's going to take you to all those different places. Well, and Twitter. Oh, yes, we don't want to forget Twitter. Yes, Twitter is Wanda J.R. Prowl. Wanda J.R. Prowl for Twitter. And again, subscribe to my YouTube channel at Wanda Prowl. Again, I am Wanda J. Prowl, your ever better talk show host, educator, author, minister, yes, who brought you issues of the heart for the young and wise with part three. Yes. A new me for greater works. I love you all. Make Sunday a day for family service worship. Yes. Tomorrow. Yes. Make it a family worship service day. And I want you to stay blessed, stay safe, and have a wonderful, wonderful, blessed day. God bless. Bye-bye.